My name is Rich. And I'm Paul. And this is a comic strip AP of Don't Rest Your Head, featuring the sleepless nights of Alan Turner. So this is our, our first time uh, getting to know Alan Turner in Don't Rest Your Head. So Don't Rest Your Head is a game from 2006 by Evil Hat. Uh, Fred Hicks wrote it. It's a game about insomniacs who have been awake for so long that they have gained preternatural powers. And so we're going to learn about one of those awake, capital A, awake, Alan Turner. Paul, on the surface, which is actually part of the character creation, on the surface, tell us about Alan. Um, Alan's in his mid-30s. He has a really super great job at the uh, Buy More, uh, where he's with Geeks on the Roll, fixing uh, stupid people's stupid computer problems. No girlfriend. But he he does uh, he really excels with the darts team from the Buy More. Uh, we play every Thursday night at, at a place called Carlos O'Sullivan's Irish Cantina, <laughs> and he's the he's the best uh, best shooter on the team. Nice. What lies beneath? Well, on the outside he's that guy, but on the inside, let's say he he kind of has uh, Marvin Gaye's soul and Isaac Hayes style. Ooh. All uh, all trapped in a white man's pasty body. <laughs> he likes to say, if, if you prick me, do I not bleed funk? His stepmom looked like Pam Greer, cooked like a South Carolina granny, drank like John Lee Hooker, and kicked the ass of anything that stood in her way. <laughs> and she was, she was really his biggest influence from the time his birth mom uh, finally got tired of dad's shit and left when he was like eight. And she is that influence, you know, because Dad's an important executive, so he's got other things to do. Ah, okay, okay. But you are an insomniac. What has been keeping you awake, Alan? I didn't give you the name of the band. Oh, that's right. Alan sings with a band called Pierced Funk and the Apparent Algae. (laughs) It's a funk and soul band. And about a month ago, three weeks maybe, um, our bass player, Honey Combs, who's really kind of the sole animal of the whole band, she she just disappeared. At first, we just thought, you know, she was being honey, not, you know, and even uh, Digger couldn't keep up that facade after the first week, and the band has had to cancel a couple gigs, and no matter what anyone implies, there is no romantic relationship between Honey and Alan, seriously. But... uh she is kind of the center of his bliss solar system as as part of the band, and he's just been very worried. Understood, understood. What's just happened to you, Alan? So I'm going to go into first person for real here. All right. I got a call on my cell from an unknown number. Uh, I usually wouldn't pick it up, but I did, just in case it had something to do with Honey. I heard some crowd noise. And, you know, a band in the back. And then I could hear Honey's bass solo from the cover of Superstitious that we've been uh, been working on. Oh, God, pull sounds out of that bass that would make Jaco Pastorius weep, just tears. And even over the phone, it sounded good. And then some dude shouted something into the phone at me. I don't even know if it was in a language. I didn't understand it. It did it sounded like gibberish and then the phone caught off. Nothing. Ooh, interesting, interesting. Okay. And there's one last question here. This part of character creation for Don't Rest Your Head. I do want to ask it. What is your path? My path is well, short term, getting honey back. We have a, a gig two weeks from now where uh, an A&R guy is supposed to be there to listen to us. Longer term, the band gets noticed, we get gigs, we get a record contract. It, it's just, I have so much faith in what Honey, Dirtball, Digger, and me have put together with this band. It's just, it's, we really got something. All right, all right. So you just ended up that phone call, or, or the phone call is ended on you, right? And you hear from behind you uh, the store manager, um, the store manager, Nate Goins, for Buy More, says, Hey, um, Alan, Alan, you know, uh, mobile phone use is, it's not entirely, dis- it's, it's te- technically you really shouldn't be using the phone when you're, 
Uh, <clears throat> anyway, Alan, I, I need you to go out on a call. I know it's a little bit late. I appreciate you working uh, the, the evening shift, but I've got a, a an install and Mrs. Haversham's. Uh, sure, Nate, whatever. I, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, because cause Joey, you know, he's he's on that stereo install, and so you're the only guy that's on call. Miss Haversham, uh, she's just, it's just a couple miles out. Um, so I just need you to take care of that, and I'll tell you what, if you get done early, you want to go home, you know, that's fine. Just call it a night, but but I, I need you to head out there, okay? Yeah, sh- sh- sure, Nate. I, that's whatever. I'm I'm still... Though I'm still looking at my phone a little bit, trying to figure out what the hell's going on. What I really want to do is get out to the car and out of his line of sight so that I can maybe, you know, call the guys or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you check the ticket and you see that Ms. Haversham has ordered some kind of grandiose. Ins- What's the thing that she's asked uh, on this install? What are you going to be putting in? It's this ridiculous overpriced uh, Dolby you know super, like movie theater surround sound system um, and she even ordered like she even ordered the gold monster cables which is just oh. just ridiculous <laughs> it's just what a waste of money nice nice but the, but, but the customer's always right so. yes awesome so you head out to uh, the buy more car which I'm imagining maybe it looks like uh, like well I'm thinking it's like a Mini Cooper, right? And it's got the cool buy more color scheme on it. Yeah, that 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 is absolutely, and and cool in this case is um, they they really wanted it to be blue and yellow because you know familiar, but um, unfortunately they made the choice to go with purple and yellow <laughs> because blue and yellow had already been taken. So it really looks like the 70s threw up on this car. Following GPS, you head, you pull out, uh, you head down the street, take a few turns and end up on a lonely end of a cul-de-sac. And there's a Victorian house there. So this this house, it's, it's older. Uh, there's a, a, a few weeds in the yard. Narrow windows that you'd see in like the very old style Victorian. The shingles, even though it's, it's dark outside, there's a little bit of track lighting and you can see it's got mint green shingles and there's like a lattice work that's covered with ivy off to the side. And uh, there's a huge chimney that kind of dominates one series and it actually has one of those crazy looking Victorian style, like almost parapet type things, you know, on the left hand side. Head up to the porch ring on the doorbell it's this grandiose style of of like a gothic chime this sounds and then there's lights on inside and you hear that creak 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 sound of someone coming closer to the door the door opens up and there's this older lady she looks like maybe she's 80 years old and she's stooped over with age and has a pair of uh, big thick horn rim glasses that have the chain that, that go around her neck yeah and she, she's got a shawl and she's wearing these like fuzzy slippers and uh and she peers out into the into the gloom and, and makes you up and she recognizes your uniform right oh i i i i'm so glad that you came out I, I didn't know because it's so late that you guys were open, but I thought you were coming tomorrow to come. Come in, come in, sir. Thank you, ma'am. I'm I'm Alan, and I'm here to do your install. All righty, okay. Come on, come on, Alan. It's um it's upstairs in the biggest room we have. Uh, she walks to the right, and you can see in the the front entryway here. Uh, it splits off to the left to a smaller kind of living room, less of a living room, more of a uh, an area you would entertain guests without letting them further into. But she's heading off to the right, and you see there's this lacquered set of wooden stairs that lead up, and you can see that the lacquer almost looks sticky as you step into the stoop. And she moves over to a chairlift and sits down, and clicks a little button, and starts zipping up uh, towards the second story. Well, I let her get a little bit of a lead, um, so I don't run into the back of the chairlift. 
um, and then I'll follow up the stairs. Cool. And she looks down. It goes very slowly. Like you, you have to take like two steps. Wait, two steps. Wait, two steps. Wait. And yeah. she calmly looks down at you and says, "So, so are you going to need to take measurements and, and everything before you do the, the putting it in? Is that is that how it goes?" Yes, I'll I'll have to make a few calculations to make sure that the surround works uh, properly, but I can do that. I've got an, an app in my in my phone. No, oh, I, I can oh, do most, great. most of that. Great. And she eventually you make it to the top of the stairs, and she unhooks the little seat belt and creeps along and leads you down a small hallway. And then you come into the room that overlooks. There's a huge window that actually looks down. And you can see your buy more. Mini Cooper, and there's here. It's, it's been pretty well cleared out, except there is three. There are three stacks of old albums, old records, just ancient stuff, and a, a, a really nice uh, record player, kind of the the old stand up style record player, you know. And there's also that chimney. It looks like one of the chimneys is in the corner. Uh, that large chimney, Dominic, up here on the second story, and it looks. It looks unused, pretty blocked off, uh, and she. It's so I was thinking, you know, I could watch TV here and still look out. I'm part of the neighborhood watch program, uh, so I I need to be able to see outside. Uh, and I was thinking this would be the best vantage point. And she walks over to this ancient-looking kind of avocado-colored couch and uh, gestures to her small pair of binoculars and uh and looks over at you i'll look to see make sure that there's space between the the windows on the wall for the ridiculous tv and there appears to be um it's not ideal placement because it'll be backlit during the day so it'll be a little faded i I explain that uh i explain that to mrs haversham but i i certainly can do that for you and We'll adjust as well as we can for the for the lighting. All right, all right. Well, I, everything's already a little faded for me anyway, Sonny. So I, I appreciate that information. Um, okay, well, I'm going to... Would you like some tea? I'm fine, thank you, Mrs. Habersham. All right, I'll I'll let you do your work. I'm I'm going to head downstairs. It, I my TV downstairs might be a little on the loud side. That's... Uh, so you may have to come get me if you need me. Okay. All right. I'll just follow the sound of the TV. And then she creeps, and then you hear the gang of the chairlift heading down, and you're left alone. You spend some time measuring everything out and kind of checking where it might be the best place, looking for the where the studs are and, and all that prep work. And then you hear the sound of, of like the crackle of fire, and there's a smell of, of smoke. But that's when you look over into that chimney that looked like it was blocked off. And there's a, a coal fire red in the chimney now. And you hear something in the chimney. A voice. What is what what, what is it saying? This is this is the one, right? Yes. Yes in here. Head head in here. And then you see a pair of scaly claws grip on the upper portion of the chimney as if something's crawling down from the roof and crawling into this area. Huh. And we'll stop right here. Awesome. Hi, this is Jason from the Gauntlet Gaming Community. If you enjoyed this episode of Comic Strip AP, please consider supporting the Gauntlet on Patreon. Our page can be found at patreon.com forward slash gauntlet.